Hi everyone, so this is lesson 2A, the Ray model of light and plane mirrors. Um, and I say that this is 2A because there's also going to be a 2B, which is also about the Ray model of light, but it'll be about a different type of mirror, uh, concave and convex mirrors. Um, so these lessons are related, so that's why I call them A and B. All right, learning goals. Uh, in this lesson, you're going to learn a little bit more scientific vocabulary and discuss the laws of reflection, which will allow you to create ray diagrams. Um, once you know those things, then you will actually create ray diagrams, um, specifically in this lesson, using plane mirrors. Okay, so to get started, we need a bit of vocabulary first. So we're going to talk about luminous versus non-luminous sources. Uh, and so a luminous source is a source that creates its own light. Uh, a non-luminous source cannot create its own light, but it reflects light from other luminous sources, or in some cases from other non-luminous sources that are reflecting um, light from somewhere else. So, which of these two objects would you say is luminous? Uh, hopefully you're aware that the sun would be luminous, right? The sun gives off its own light, um, it heats through nuclear fusion, and uh, generates light from that heat, so it's actually incandescent, uh, whereas the moon does not generate its own light. Uh, it only reflects the light of the sun. Um, and that's why we have the different phases of the moon, right? Uh, you have a, um, a half moon, for example, because um, only a part of the surface is actually lit up by the sun from our perspective, right? Um, it's because of the position of the sun, the moon, in its orbit um, around us that we can only see some of its uh, surface lit up. Now, you might actually be able to say, you might actually say that, well, wait a minute, even when a moon is a half moon, you can kind of see a shadowy version uh, of the rest of the moon. Um, and that's true sometimes, but that's actually uh, what we call earth shine. So that's um, light bouncing from the sun off the earth, um, hitting the moon and bouncing off the moon again, and then you can see that. So so the moon doesn't actually generate its, its own light. Uh, so we are going to use ray diagrams to model how light uh, travels and how light is reflected, and that's going to allow us to analyze uh, what things look like when we see them, uh, when we see reflections. So we're going to assume that light travels in a straight line. Um, we are going to model light as uh, these arrows, which we call rays. So um, it's just an arrow with a point for a direction, right? It shows you where the light ray is headed. Um, and we're going to have a couple of different types of these rays. So we're going to use a little bit more vocabulary down here. Uh, so in a diagram, you're going to have a source, which is the object that you are analyzing, right? The one that's emitting or reflecting light that you are going to be uh, looking at in a mirror. And so that object, you want to see what that object looks like in the mirror. So we call that a source. Um, the source could be luminous, but it could also be non-luminous. Uh, sometimes you might see a candle for a source, but often in these, especially on test questions, you'll just see little arrows or things that are easy to draw so that you don't have to struggle too much in the actual um, drawing. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, they can be something that gives off light or something that just reflects light. Um, light coming from a source and headed towards a mirror is called an incident ray. Light headed bouncing off of the mirror and heading um, away from the mirror is called a reflected ray. Uh, and so this would be an incident ray here. You can see this is your light source. So the ray of light comes from the light source, bounces off the mirror. So this is your incident ray, and this is your reflected ray. Right. So the light bounces off the mirror and reflects and heads towards what we call an observer, somebody who is watching um, the, the mirror. Uh, so the light uh, have sending an incident ray, the source sending an incident ray to the mirror, the light bouncing off the mirror and producing a reflected ray, um, and going to the observer creates an image. So uh, this is an image. It's not actually real, right? This is what the equivalent of this thing here, what you're seeing in the mirror. Um, and the image is created because the observer, uh, the brain assumes that the light travels in a straight line. So the light actually stops traveling in a straight line here, right? From this point, it's actually bounced um, from here to there, right? So there's an actual, it's not a straight line, it bounces before it travels in a straight line. But your brain assumes it's always traveling in a straight line, so it will project the light rays behind the mirror, and we indicate that with dotted lines. Um, and so you actually have, just to make sure that this is clear, you actually have four light rays here. You have this incident ray, you have that incident ray, you have this reflected ray, and you have that reflected ray. So the two reflected rays will intersect somewhere behind the mirror. They're actually diverging in front of the mirror, meaning they're moving away from each other. It's a little bit hard to see on this diagram. Uh, but if you connect them behind the mirror, you'll see where they connect, um, and that's going to show you where that part of the image will be. Um, so the light rays are actually coming off in all directions. 
but you only need to draw a couple of them to analyze um, where the image will be on the other side. So um, an important rule to follow when creating, doing this kind of analysis is what we call the laws of reflection. So the law of reflection here is that the angle of incidence uh, is equal to the angle of reflection. Um, so what does that mean? Well, if you have a plane mirror, so plane mirror means the mirror is flat, like this one. If you have a plane mirror and you have an incident ray coming from a source and it strikes the mirror, you can relate that incident ray to a normal. And normal is just a, a dotted line, it's imaginary, um, that intersects with the mirror at 90 degrees. Okay, so you have a normal here. So there's an angle that forms between your incident ray and the normal, and we call that the angle of incidence. And the law states that when there's a reflected ray on the other side, the angle of reflection between the normal and the reflected ray will be equal to the angle of incidence. So these two are the same. Okay, that's just the law of reflection. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Um, but note that the um, angle between the uh, ray and the mirror, this angle, is not the angle of incidence, right? It's between the normal and the uh, incident ray, not the mirror and the incident ray. And the same thing goes for the angle of reflection, right? It's between the normal and the reflected ray, not the mirror and the reflected ray. Okay, so you'll notice that when these light rays hit this mirror, if we were to draw a normal there, then the angle on this side and the angle on that side will be equal. And that's gonna allow you to draw this image. Okay, so a question that you might be asked uh, to complete might, the answer to the question might look something like this, where you have uh, an object and you have an observer and you have a mirror and then you have to figure out by drawing rays what this image will look like. Um, and these questions can look very confusing, um, especially if you're not used to them. Uh, but if you take them step by step, there's a fairly easy way to get them done. And you can even cheat a little bit. And I'm gonna show you how to do that because Creating these diagrams um, without doing that can be very challenging unless you're using protractors uh, and rulers and being very, very careful and taking a, a lot of time. Okay, so this is an example of what a question might look like. You have an observer, you have a source, you have a plane mirror, and you have to draw on this side what this object will look like. Um, so again, I said you could cheat a little bit, so I'm going to show you how you can cheat with a plane mirror. Uh, you can cheat by using this acronym, SALT. Um, and we're going to be using SALT for a number of things in this unit um, when we get to the, the next kinds of uh, mirrors as well and we get to lenses. Uh, so SALT is an acronym that's going to help you remember um, what images are supposed to look like or how to analyze them. So SALT stands for Size, Attitude, Location, and Type, S-A-L-T. Uh, so this is telling you about uh, how an image compares to its original object. So if I have the original object here and I'm looking at the image, how do I compare them? So S stands for size. So what's the size of the image like compared to the size of the object? Is it bigger than the object? Is it smaller than the object? Is it the same size as the object? What about the attitude of the image? Is it upright? Are you seeing the image in the same ori orientation upright? Or is it uh, flipped? Is the image upside down? Um, location of the image. Where does it actually appear? and the type of image. Is it uh, a real image, meaning that it comes from light rays actually crossing, uh, or is it a virtual image? The light rays don't actually cross. They just appear to cross behind the mirror, uh, but they're not actually there, so um, it's not real light that's crossing. It's your brain is interpreting light crossing somewhere where it actually doesn't. Okay, so how do I use this for plane mirrors? Well, the key thing to remember is that SALT is always the same for plane mirrors. Uh, the S-A-L-T attributes of a plane mirror, plane mirror are always the same. Uh, so for example, uh, size. Uh, in a plane mirror, an object is always the same size um, as the image, or I should say the image is the same size as the object. So if you look at your face in a mirror, um, if it's a plane mirror, your face will be the same size um, as the image in the mirror. Um, and uh, if it's a plane mirror, that will always be true, which I think some people are not convinced of, but if you've got a plane mirror at your home, you can, you can test it. It's true. Um, maybe if you have things like a makeup case or, or something like that, like a small hand mirror, you might think, well, wait a minute. No, that's wrong. My face is way bigger in that mirror. Um, but if you look at that mirror carefully, you'll notice it's not flat. It's, it's not a plane mirror. Um, in a flat mirror, the object is going to be the same size as the image. 
um, the attitude is going to be upright. Um, again, that should make sense. If you've got a flat mirror in your home, you, sh you should notice, right? You're not upside down in that mirror. You're upright. Um, you might be inverted left to right, uh, which does happen in mirrors. Um, but uh, in terms of uh, upside down, which is what we're interested in here, or right side up, you are right side up. You are upright. Uh, location of the image is behind the mirror. If you look at yourself in a mirror, you look like you're in a room that is inside the mirror, and it looks like you are inside the mirror as well. Um, and you are the same distance uh, from the mirror inside the mirror as you are in real life. Um, so if you were to, uh, I imagine, take a ruler or something like that, or take a measuring tape and measure yourself, um, and put the measuring tape against the mirror and measure how far away you are, you would see the same measuring tape inside the mirror measuring you the same distance away um, behind the mirror as well. Um, and the, um, uh, the distances would be equal, right? So one centimeter behind the mirror looks like one centimeter in front of the mirror. Uh, the type of image is also always virtual. So when you're looking at yourself inside a flat mirror, um, you're not looking at light rays that actually cross. What you're looking at are uh, light rays that your brain thinks are crossing behind the mirror. So like I was showing you in this diagram uh, here, right? These light rays don't actually cross. The light rays cross there where the actual object is. Uh, they just appear to cross there because your brain assumes they travel in a straight line. Okay, so um, drawing diagrams. So again, I might ask you to draw something like this. Um, so draw the object on this side and draw the rays like we have in this picture, um, showing how the image is formed. So um, I said you can cheat because if you know salt, then you kind of already know what it's supposed to look like, right? The object is going to be upright. It's going to be on the opposite side of the mirror. And the distances from here to the mirror are going to be the same on the other side. So you you don't have to actually draw the rays to figure out what the image looks like. If you know salt for plane mirrors, then you already know. So you can just draw it. But what you then have to do is show, okay, yeah, that's what the image looks like, but why does it look that way? Um, and that's what this picture shows, right? Because this picture shows that if you're looking, for example, at the top of an object, um, that when the light rays strike the mirror and then bounce off with the angle of incidence equaling the angle of reflection, um, if you look at the way that the angles work out, um, then the light rays um, will virtually touch the same distance on the right side as they are from the left side. Um, so that'll be true for the top, and that'll be true for the bottom. So once you know where the top and bottom are, you can just draw the arrow. Um, but this picture really is what shows you why you see the arrow looking like this. So keep in mind that that's your goal when you're drawing these pictures. You're trying to show why does the arrow look like it's in this position. Okay, so... Uh, confession to make here, I was trying to draw this out in uh, Microsoft Paint for quite some time. I've done this video like three times now, um, and I just couldn't get it to work properly. Um, my paint skills aren't that great, and I was having lines that were horribly messy and not working out. So um, I'm just going to give up and have you watch a YouTube video of somebody actually doing it. So if you watch this video, uh, you'll see somebody doing it by hand. Um, and feel free to do this however you like. If you want to do it by hand, um, it's probably easier than using Microsoft Paint. Um, if you have a better program, you can probably use that as well. Um, I really liked drawing uh, these ray diagrams when I had a smart board at school. Um, so if you have something like that in terms of like the, the notebook program, I mean something like that that has the same sort of capabilities, um, then, uh, then that might be um, an option as well. Okay, but again, for your assignment, feel free, do it by hand, do it by computer, um, I'll accept either. All right, that's the end of this one. Uh, please watch that video so you have a fully worked example, um, and then uh, get some practice uh, before beginning your uh, unit two assessment, or sorry, unit lesson two assessment. Thank you.